guys. I've been messing with this damn shot. It's been driving me crazy. Because I practice this a lot. And I should be better at it than I am. Should be a hell of a lot better at it than I am. Just talking about backing the five back to here. This is a fairly standard one pocket shot because you can hit it with speed to keep the, the five ball in this area. It's also, you know, the top guys, they almost treat it like it's a damn hanger. And sometimes I can shoot it and, you know, I can make it several times in a row. If one, you know, it's like once I get locked in, I guess. So this five is maybe a half an inch, maybe three quarter of an inch off that diamond. And the cue ball is about the ball is with the way. And I know that there is a way to hit this ball to get that five to grab. Like that time it didn't. It came straight off like it didn't have any English at all. But then sometimes I will hit it and it'll grab too much and hit the long rail. And it really does drive me crazy because I haven't figured out I haven't figured out the secret to the shot yet. Most of the things that I've heard have talked about don't use any English on the shot. Yeah, John Brumack says, if you put English on it, you will never make it. You know, he's John Brumback. I'm not John Brumback. The only way I've ever made this shot is in this case, loading it up with right English. So I have to get the right kind of stroke on it and everything to get it to go in. I just don't have ever made the shot. But I know it's possible to do it the other way because all those top guys do it. It's a, it's not, it kind of drives me crazy because there's just something, there's something in stroke timing or something like that that gives like the maximum amount of spin put on this five ball, which you need. You need to have that spin so it gets up there and comes back. But I haven't figured it out yet. Every night I'll stumble across it. And I'll think, yay, I got that shot. And then I don't have that shot. Because then I'll miss it the next 85 times I shoot it. And that time I hit the shit, there wasn't that much interest in me to do that. So anyway, I'm just, just messing around with the shot. I like to mess around with the shot. Usually facing the other way because there's a TV there. I'll watch TV and I'll just shoot the shot. I have a video that I tried to find and I couldn't find. So I've Grady Matthews down here uh, in like 2001. He would shoot the shot with the five ball frozen to the rim. And this is kind of one of his, you know, pet specialty shots. And he was very good at it. But I couldn't find the, I couldn't find the, the video, but I know I have it. And there's probably other videos out there of him doing it with the ball frozen. That just seems, you know, almost like magic to me. I think the way that John Redback has it in one of his videos, something like this, where there's a ball's grip, and maybe a couple balls grip too. I think, but I don't know this for a fact. It's all the same kind of concept. The point is just get, get some English to still be on that five by the time it gets to that rail. If you watch that time, there was none. There was zero English on that ball. If I load it up with right English, the cue ball, then I will have that English. Yet, all the top guys said, oh, you don't need to use any English. They have a different stroke than me, almost certainly a better stroke than me. I can't figure it out. It's, it's still fine, and I'm still not, I'm not going to give up, because eventually, maybe before I die of old age, I'll figure out what is this magic stroke timing thing that you have to have for the shot. 
I've had some success with no English but an elevated key, a slightly elevated key. I've had, at that time I didn't have any, I didn't have any success. You know? But I have in the past had some success with the stupid shot with an elevated key. Not tonight, apparently, but that's fine. Cliff Joyner used to shoot this shot. Back when Cliff was probably regarded as the top American one pocket player, and maybe even second only to like Efren as far as one pocket players, period. I'm talking like turn of the century type stuff. He would shoot this shot with the two balls the same distance from this rail. And the problem with this, the biggest problem with this, is getting out of the way of the kiss. You, you want the cue ball to get the hell out of the way, so if the five's coming back towards the pocket, you need a cue ball to be gone, or all you get is a, a long double kiss. Anyway, Cliff used to shoot this shot. Of course, I'm not going to do it. But he would jump the cue ball just a little bit, not into the five, I don't believe, but it would at least be it would be hopping its way to the fly or something like that. But he would do that. And if, if, if I didn't suck, then maybe I would have demonstrated that a little bit better. I'm just going to try it. I'm just going to try it again. Just hop into the damn ball. Yeah, kind of like that, I guess. You see, I don't know if you, if you paid attention. The five didn't have very much English, but it had some. But what the cue ball did is it, it went up and then came down on the rail to help it, it helped it to get the hell out of the way. And that was one of the cool things that that I saw Cliff Joyner do. Now, the cue ball's behaving now, but I'm just not getting any any spin transfer to this object ball. I often have better success this way. Don't know why it makes a difference, but sometimes it does make a difference. No English at all in this one. And I got too much spin transfer. So I have to cut it more. Shot drives me crazy. Now, that time I cut it out too much and the ball came straight back. So it had some English, just not enough. A little bit of left English, half tip. Still not quite that. So that's just what I'm messing with here tonight. I'm, I'm still going through a little bit of the, of the doldrums of not, not being as motivated as I would like to be. Work has been killing me. It's freaking killing me. Um, I turned 57 last month, and I had a, I think my last video was about I got a, a, a Sean, an old Rundy Sean, and I was going to have to decide if that was going to be my new man. Well, I played with that Sean and nothing else for over a week. And after that week, I decided that. You know, I'm going to stick with the Southwest. The reason I'm going to stick with the Southwest is all about playability, it really is. I know I've talked about street cred and all that kind of stuff as well, but with that shot, I was playing with the Jacoby Ultra Shaft, and I said I was going to do that. And it is low, it's low squirt, which is cool. It hits good, which is cool, but only by some definition of hit. I know I've talked quite a bit about a definition of a hit for me would be transfer of energy to the object ball. And one of the examples that I would use would be this here. Shoot this five, which is a slight cut to my left, and, and get shape on the four. Like that. There's a lot of things like that. Now, those Jacoby Ultra shafts can do that. And I was pretty accurate with that damn cue. But just every now and then, the cue ball would do something weird. Usually the object ball did just fine. The Q 
you all would do something, we would die down there. Or we get way too much English, or not enough English. It wasn't consistent. And that's another part about HIT. Then I guess I, I wasn't really, you know, I didn't describe in other videos, I don't believe. But you have energy transfer, which is, it hits like a railroad tie, you hear stuff like that, versus it hits like a limp noodle. But you also have to have some consistency. Is the cue ball, if you do all everything the same way, is the same thing going to happen, that type of deal? Because consistency leads to predictability. And if you don't have the consistency, now for me, it's just not, it's not the cue I want to play with. You know, pool's a hard enough game without me kind of playing and hoping that things happen the way I just executed them the way I tried to execute that. If I miss a shot I'll, or screw something up shape-wise or whatever, I want it to be because I screwed something up. I don't want it to be just some random thing, I guess, about you know the cue that I'm using. And that's kind of what I was finding with that, that Jacoby shaft on that shot. All, it's all the shaft in that case. It, it was, it was not the, the fact that it's just Sean, the Sean Blood. It was all that. But I decided that if I was going to switch back to a Sean Q, it was going to be switching back to a low deflection, low short shift. And I gave it an absolute fair try. I wanted it, I wanted it to win because the accuracy that I had by eliminating a lot of the squirt, it was a very cool thing. I felt like Jason Shaw every now and then. You know, Mr. Accurate. But it happened often enough that the cue ball would just go too far, not far enough, something weird would happen, and it, and it wouldn't be something where I'd go, well, Dave, you hit that too hard, or Dave, you suck in some other way. I couldn't do that. I, all I could really do is go, well, damn, this shaft is not playing very consistently at all. And I decided I didn't like it. I didn't like that as much as I like the stock shaft on my southwest. Now, sure, I could take that Sean, and I could take, I've got, fuck, 20 stock Sean shafts laying around, not just the ones that came with that cube. And I could put one on there and play. But I think I mentioned in my other video that the stock Sean shafts, in my opinion, do not hit as well as a lot of other stock shafts do. This stock southwest hits better than a stock shot. Like Joss stock shafts hit better than a stock shot. My peach hours absolutely certainly hit better than a stock shot shaft. Um, so this you know my decision, I had said before, this is gonna be my decision. And my decision is that my Sean is over there on the wall. It's going to go into the rotation where I just play with it down here now and then. But my daily driver will continue to be my southwest. And for anybody that's been on the edge of their seat for a week waiting for that news, well, there's the news. Interesting.